Good evening. Coming up tonight. <laughs> the USC Workers Union held a rally on the horseshoe this past Thursday. Plus, the Gamecocks are heading back to the Final Four. And how, and how you can watch USC students perform in the visit this week. All that and more <laughs> tonight on Student News at 7. Live from the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio. This is Student News at 7. April Fools. Good evening, Carolina. I'm Grace Berkery. <laughs> and I'm Clarissa Meyer. Thanks for joining us tonight. This past Thursday, the United Campus Workers Union of South Carolina rallied through USC's horseshoe. Gathering around 50 workers and a variety of guest speakers, the rally unified together to keep pushing for change. The worker union began marching outside the president's mansion and ended with delivering a petition to President Michael Emeritus's Emeritus. The petition is pushing for implementing a minimum wage of $20 per hour for, bo for both full-time and part-time workers on top of better annual minimum stipends. A graduate assistant, Robert Boland, re remarked how his pay was not enough to cover tuition costs, with his stipend being only $5,000 a year. These changes are demanded to keep up with the increasing costs of living due to inflation. The petition signed by more than 1,000 community members and workers with connections to USC was given to, was given to President Emeritus by the, his chief of staff. Even though the university has been adjusting wages for faculty and staff, members of the union are not, are not satisfied. The raise to $15 per hour from July 2023 only affects full-time workers, leaving out part-time workers that the union is still fighting for. The Russell House Underground has a new venue for students to showcase their talents. SGTV reporter Bridget Bruchowski has the story. Just beneath Russell House lies the new student-operated live music venue, Live at the Underground, a collaboration between the Music Industry Studies Program, Russell House, and Gamecock Entertainment provides students with hands-on experience for those interested in the music industry. Students in the program train in various roles from concert planning, promotion, production, and more as a requirement in this capstone course. The venue not only aims to teach students these skills, but also serve as an entertainment space to Live at the Underground hosts weekly performances, including open mic nights and showcases for both student and local artists. To have a live music venue and like to have quality performers come in and it be free to students and it be so accessible, especially like with the price of concert tickets and they don't get any cheaper. Even with the convenience of free shows, Live at the Underground is still trying to grow their fan base. It takes a lot to build up a program like this, especially we've essentially been building this from the ground up. Having student and local bands perform right on campus provides the opportunity for these acts to build a connection with the university community. It's great. You know, we love the energy that playing on our campus brings. Um, especially it being our home campus, uh, Go Cox. In terms of the students being here, you know, it's, it, it's great having, having the reach that USC has been able to, to get to. It's super awesome to see the people that have come and seen us a couple of times. They can sing along the songs that we wrote but haven't released yet. That's a really, really cool feeling. As the semester comes to a close, students still have the opportunity to catch a show at Live at the Underground every Wednesday or at another event. For SGTV, I'm Bridget Brachowski. Thanks, Bridget. I think this is such a cute addition to our campus, and mm -hmm. I think it could give like a good platform to some aspiring student musicians. Do you think it'll go, Carissa? Yeah, I really love live bands. I have, I mean, like, just the aesthetic, the vibes, being able to just, oh, it's amazing. Especially now in the, like, a little bit darker underground type of thing. That's fun. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Three USC senior students studying finance and computer science were a part of an initiative to help develop quantum computing expertise in South Carolina. 
This effort was funded by the South Carolina Quantum Association and includes bringing plans for degree programs and online trainings for future high-tech, high-paying jobs. The students worked on a research project that aimed to improve retirement investment strategies for a local bank using quantum computing. With their new valuable skills, the Darla Moore students continued on to MIT for a hackathon competition where they finished third place. The next goal of the two students is to apply their knowledge to a new hedge fund they, they founded called Shaw Circle and to advance their careers. The State House moved one step closer to passing a bill that takes a stance against diversity, equity, and inclusion in higher education. In an 84 to 30 vote, the House passed a bill with all Democrat representatives present voting no. The bill prohibits schools from making admission decisions based on an applicant's commitment to or disagreement with any political ideology, including statements regarding DEI and other issues. Proponents of the bill say it's an effort to fight discrimination on college campuses and protect all viewpoints. However, there are concerns from local students and diversity leaders saying it's taking a problematic step back in history. The bill will now head over to the Senate where it will follow a similar process. Coming up after the break, SGTV sports reporters Lauren Susi and Isabella Davis will give us the latest in sports. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Lauren Susi. And I'm Isabella Davis, here to give you the latest in sports. Gamecock women's basketball is still fighting for their spot in the national championship game. From Sweet 16 to Elite 8 and now Final Four, South Carolina battled some of the best to make it here. On Sunday, the Gamecocks faced number three seed Oregon State in a tricky and intense game. Oregon State found themselves in foul trouble very early ending the first half with two of their most crucial players both having three fouls each. At halftime, Gamecocks were up by four points, the score sitting 37-33 to South Carolina. Ashlyn Watkins had an incredible game and has been stepping up to the plate when her teammates need her all season. Watkins finished the first half with six points and six rebounds off the bench. Oregon State tried to keep up Tried to keep the scoring margin close, but it was no match for the combined efforts of South Carolina. The Gamecocks won with a final score 70 to 58 South Carolina. This team will be dancing their way to the final four where they will face NC State. A lot of big games are being played tonight as we speak, and stakes are at an all-time high for South Carolina. Get ready, Gamecock fans. I'm super excited to see the Gamecocks face NC State on Friday. It's going to be a pretty big game. It is, and also tonight we have those big games. LSU and Iowa are playing tonight, so I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. It's a big time for basketball right now. Mm -hmm. And USC and UConn, there's so many women's basketball games occurring. It's a really big time for the sport. It is, really exciting. South Carolina softball earned a series sweep over the weekend on the road at Ole Miss. In the first game of the series on Friday, the Gamecocks took down the Rebels 2-0 in nine innings with a complete game shutout from Elena Vodder. The Gamecocks went on to win the series against the Rebels on Saturday with an 8-3 victory. During Sunday's game, the team defeated the Rebels 4-0 to finish off their series sweep. Senior Riley Blampede finished the weekend strong with three RBIs and a home run for the Gamecocks. Zoe Leno also got a pair of hits to finish 2-for-3 on Sunday. Elena Vodder threw five innings in relief, scattering four hits and striking out five. Over the series sweep, Vodder finished tossing 15 shutout innings over all three games. Jory Hurd started for Carolina over the weekend, throwing two innings and allowing two hits. Carolina came out in the third inning when Jen Cummings was hit by a pitch to lead off the inning. On the next pitch, Riley Blampy connected with her third home run of the season. This game marks the first road sweep in SEC play for Carolina since 2013 when they swept Mississippi State. The number 22 ranked softball team will play Winthrop next, this Wednesday at 6 p.m. at Beckham Field. The University of South Carolina's baseball team won a nail-biting victory over Alabama in a game that kept fans on the edge of their seat. Gamecocks face Crimson Tide this Saturday at Sewell Thomas Stadium in Tuscaloosa. The game started off slow for South Carolina and the team found themselves trailing early but the Gamecocks made a remarkable comeback, scoring five runs in the seventh inning to take the lead. Just as South Carolina got into a groove, Alabama loaded the bases in the ninth inning and scored four runs to narrow the gap to just one. 
South Carolina held strong under the pressure and ultimately made a crucial play to secure the final out and persevere the 9-8 victory. Cole Messina led the charge for South Carolina, going 3-4 for four and 2 RBI and 2 runs scored. Ethan Petri also extended his impressive streak of reaching base to 38 games. South Carolina will be looking to carry this momentum into their upcoming game this Wednesday night. Gamecocks will face Georgia Southern at Founders Park here in Columbia, kicking off a four-game homestand. The Carolina Cup is a longtime South Carolina tradition that has garnered premier social event status in the Palmetto State. On Saturday, Camden's 89th annual Carolina Cup brought in thousands of horse racing fans in the Midlands from all over. The Carolina Cup is a big event in Camden. In Kershaw County, around 40,000 people came out as early as 9 a.m. for the Carolina Cup to kick off their day of tailgating at the Springdale Racecourse. This event has been enjoyed for decades by thousands of people experiencing the spectacle as a way to jump into springtime. At the Carolina Cup, many vendors were set up around the stands. There was an Easter egg hunt for the kids, a tailgating contest, and even a hat contest for the ladies. Even the Easter Bunny was in attendance. The tailgates line up right along the fence of the race course so that spectators can watch the horses run right past them. Fancy outfits, horses, and South Carolinians were all on display for those who took part in the festivities of Saturday's Carolina Cup. Whether you're interested in paying attention to what happens on the track or not, there is something to enjoy for everyone. The horses are set to race again in 2024 at the Colonial Cup on November 17th. Now, it really looked like the Carolina Club was a great day to start springtime this past weekend and a great part of Easter weekend as well. Were you able to make it out there, Lauren, to the races? No, I wasn't able to make it to Camden, but it looked like such a beautiful time from the mm -hmm. pictures I saw. And I definitely need to go because I love the outfits that they wear and all the hats. Take part in like the hat contest competition next year, maybe. Right. I think we should both go and put on our best fancy hats. For sure. <laughs> Coming up after the break, SGTV entertainment reporters Emma Connolly and Haley Brown will lay down the talk of the town. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Carolina. I'm Haley Brown. And I'm Emma Connolly, here to give you the latest in this week's entertainment. Want to see a theater performance this week? The Department of Theater and Dance will be showcasing The Visit, a play by Frederick Durenmatt and directed by Craig A. Miller. The show will be opening on April 5th and will run from 8 to 10 p.m. The show follows the world's wealthiest woman return to her hometown with an agenda in hand. The show will run until April 12th with different performance times. Performances will be located in Drayton Hall on Green Street, room 141. Ticket prices vary from $15 to $22, and you can get tickets now through the USC Department of Theater and Dance website. Don't miss your chance to see students perform in this production. On Saturday and Sunday, celebrate around 100 cultures at the Columbia International Festival at the State Fairgrounds. Since 1996, this event has brought together Columbia's various nationalities, races, and language groups. At the festival, you can sample exotic foods, shop authentic jewelry and clothing, watch traditional dance performances, and learn about different cultures through artifacts and cultural games. On Saturday, there will also be a flag presentation and a traditional fashion show mm -hmm. at 4 p.m. Tickets for teens 13 through 19 are $4, and tickets for ages 20 and up are $7, and can be purchased online at cifonline.org. Watch your peers walk down the runway on April 3rd at the 17th Annual Fashion Board Show. USC Fashion Board will be hosting their event at the Columbia Museum of Art. Doors will open at 6.30 p.m. and the show will begin at 8. Make sure to wear either cocktail style or creative black attire, as the event requires a dress code. Tickets for the show are $10 for all students and a Carolina card is needed at the entrance. Fashion Board Week started last Thursday with events including a vintage market and a philanthropy day. Tonight, as a part of the continuing celebration, they will be having a style competition at Savage Craft. If you have a passion for fashion, this event might be the one for you. Hurry and get your tickets now. Break out your kilts and bagpipes for the 12th annual Tartan Day South Celtic Festival this weekend. Columbia will be honoring the Celtic culture and heritage of the Midlands. On Thursday, there will be a free kickoff party at Steel Hands Brewing, Brewing in Casey. On Friday night, there will be a Celtic concert held at the Ice House Amphitheater in Lexington. 
The main event, held at the historic Columbia Speedway on Saturday, is the Highland Games and Celtic Festival. The, the festivities include a Highland athletic competition, sheepdog herding exhibitions, traditional dancing, a classic British car show, and lots of bagpipes. The Celtic party will continue after sundown on Saturday with a free evening of campfires and tribal beats. Parking for the main event at the Speedway will be available for $5 per car, cash only. To wrap up the weekend, on Sunday morning, West Columbia will hold the Kirkin of the Tartans, <laughs> a Scottish celebration of historic British oppression. A two-day pass for the Tartan Day and the Celtic concert can be purchased for $25. Tickets for the main event are on Saturday are $20, and tickets to just the Celtic concert are $10. Tickets can be purchased on tartan tartandaysouth.com. You know, I wish I could go to this so badly. I would love to go to an Irish festival. I went to a Scottish one a few years ago, and it's so fun. Mm. I personally really love bagpipes. I love the Scottish <laughs> national anthem. When the drums kick in, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. Actually, one time I was at the airport a couple months ago coming back to Columbia, and there was a guy with bagpipes just playing. Oh I gosh. was obsessed. That's I so love fun. <laughs> I cry every time they play Amazing Grace. Oh. Like, I can't keep it together when I hear the bagpipes do Amazing Grace. <laughs> but that's all for your entertainment news for tonight. After the break, Clarissa and Grace will return to finish up tonight's news. Stay with us. South Carolina and other Republican-led states are filing a lawsuit against Biden's recent stu student loan plan. The new repayment plan is supposed to make it faster to cancel and lower monthly payments for borrowers. Kansas leads the federal lawsuit and believes Biden is overstepping in his power. They argue the save repayment plan is the same as a previous plan rejected by the Supreme Court just last year. Biden's administration accelerated benefits for borrowers by canceling loans, hoping to give them breathing room to get out from the burden of student loan debt. Although Kansas, backed by South Carolina and others, believe the plan will, requ will require states to increase fraud protection efforts as more opportunities are open to exploit student debt borrowers. Alex Murda was sentenced to more prison time today. He pled guilty to several financial crimes, including two dozen charges of conspiracy, fraud, and money laundering, and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. The sentence also requires Murda to pay $8.7 million to his victims. During the trial, Murda admitted that some of the crimes were due to an opioid addiction, saying, quote, I knew better. In a similar trial last September, Murda also pled guilty to 22 federal charges of conspiracy to commit fraud, wire fraud, bank fraud, and money laundering. He is still planning to appeal the murder charges. U.S. Attorney Adair Burroughs says, quote, the sentence was about obtaining justice for the financial victims of Alex Murda, end quote. Hidden City Music Festival returned to the Columbia Speedway this weekend, despite concerns from Casey residents. The festival entered its third year, but the past two years have been rocky with neighbors due to the noise it brings to the area. In 2022, Hidden City was ticketed for high noise levels, with residents complaining of rattling windows and excessive bass. Because of this, the festival achieved an extension on the city's noise ordinance to 10.30 p.m. from the regular 10 p.m. With the event continuing to grow each year, Hidden City CEO says they've looked into installing permanent soundproofing if they can ensure that the Speedway can be their permanent home. So I didn't make it out to Hidden City this weekend, but I heard through the grapevine that some of our staff was there and that Shaquille O'Neal's set, or should I say DJ Diesel, was really good. <laughs> I have heard the same thing, and I know some of my friends went out there. It was giving a lot of Coachella vibes, right? but like Coachella of cola. So like, I kind of live for it, but like, it really is unfortunate for those neighbors hearing that heavy bass. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out. Mm -hmm. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Student News at 7. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, X, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. To keep up with all our content, be sure to also visit us online at SGTV at USC. For SGTV, I'm Grace Berkery. And I'm Clarissa Maya. From all of us here at SGTV, have a happy April Fool's Day, Carolina, forever today. Ha <laughs> ha